everybody. Welcome to the Stop, Drop, End It podcast. This is episode 83. My name is Lisa. I am coming to you from Long Island, New York on a rainy, cold day. Today is March 23rd, 2024, and I have not recorded since February 2nd. It's been a while. So, that being said, I am going to try not to be super perfect with this intro and record it eight gazillion times like I usually do because I can safely say it's going to be a a very, very long, long podcast today. I have so many things to catch you guys up on today. I have four finished objects. I've got a gazillion whips. I think I'm going to just share three of those today. I've got naturally dyed yarn stories to talk about. I've got spinning to share with you. I finally finished spinning my very first little skein of my rabbit Felix's wool from his baby days. So I've got that to share. And I have a small little uh, acquisition section too. So we have we have so much and yeah i think we need to just get started and talk about all of the knitting i have been doing because it's it's been about two months now almost like six or seven weeks it, it's it's a long time okay so one of the things that keeps me from podcasting so much is my perfectionist tendencies and so i'm really going to be trying to be better about just having everything perfectly ready to share with you guys and not making my environment perfect and yeah I I think that it would be more fun for me to check in with you guys a little bit more frequently so I'm gonna it's really hard for me to like go away from being such a perfectionist But I'm going to try, and we're going to try to have more podcasts coming more regularly. I've been saying that for a while, but I've not explained that it's because I am a super perfectionist. I am a Virgo. If you know anything about Virgos, then then that should just explain everything right there. Okay, so, so many finished objects to talk about. We're going to start with the first one, which I am wearing today. So let's go on into what am I wearing? So today I am wearing, finally, my Hush sweater, which is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. This is a paid for pattern. I want to say it was about eight US dollars for the pattern. I started knitting this sweater last year. Uh, My notes said it started it in March, 2023. And so this sweater I actually completed last month in February, but it's just been that long since I've podcast that I haven't shown you the finished the finished sweater yet. So um, in all honesty, I have not blocked this and I don't think I'm going to because the fit is perfect. I don't really think it needs a blocking. And because of the content of the yarn, the fiber and the yarn that I used, I think it might grow a bit. So I don't know. I just like it the way it is now. I'm not seeing a need to block this one. And so I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm just, I'm just going to wear it like I am right now and, and enjoy it like this. And then at a point when it needs to be washed, then, you know, I'll probably do a proper blocking. Um, Also, I'm just lazy and I've been really busy. So blocking it just hasn't been at the top of my priority list. But this is me also letting things go from being the perfect ideal situation, having it blocked before I wear it and show you. So (laughs) let's just get that out of the way. So this yarn that I used for the Hush sweater, it is deep, deep, deep stash from, I think... 2012 when I moved back to Long Island from my years in Florida 
that was the year I moved back here and so I'm pretty sure that this was a first year back on Long Island when I really started getting more into knitting again purchase the yarn shop I got this from doesn't even exist anymore and um, yeah I just I purchased this with I think with the idea that I was gonna make like a Christmas scarf or something for my mom and then that never happened. Felix. Felix wants to get to Elmer. There's a barrier between them. It's not gonna happen. They're not neutered. Yet we're getting there. So anyway. <laughs> um yeah, so it this you know, I bought this. I thought I was gonna knit something for my mom with the yarn. I thought that she would really enjoy these colors. So the colorway, I wrote it down, hang on, is I have, you guys, I have four pages of notes today. That's how behind I am in podcasting. Um, all right, so the yarn is Cascade Eco Duo, and the colorway is number 1706, and the name of that is Koala. I don't have the label on me, but from what I can remember, it is a combination of merino wool undyed and alpaca undyed. Now Elmer's trying to get out to play with Felix. Yeah, Elmer, you were just out playing. You gotta just settle down, bunny. I'm, I'm recording a podcast and I'm trying not to have it be perfect to save myself some editing. It's going to be long. <sighs> Bunnies. <laughs> okay. Um, where was I? Content of the yarn. I think it's 70% wool and 30% alpaca. And all of the wool and alpaca is undyed. I don't know which is which. No idea. But it's basically gray and bl and brown but the gray has like a bluish tint to it i think anyway like i see it next to the brown as being a little bit of like a baby blue so i bought this thinking my mom would really like the yarn and then so i'm showing you the cables right now from the hush sweater which is what i'm wearing um yeah i was searching for a pattern I was going through my stash. I'm like, gosh, I have a sweater quantity of this yarn. I think I had under a thousand yards, but close to a thousand, like maybe 975 total. Um, and so I just searched the yarn on Ravelry. And then I looked for projects. I looked start, I started looking for projects based on like, what did other people knit from this yarn? And first, um, like most of the projects that I found initially were too dated for my taste because again, I purchased this yarn in 2012 and that was 12 years ago because we are now in 2024, 2023 when I started the sweater and was looking up patterns. So obviously styles change. Uh, there's lots of new patterns out and it took me a while to find a pattern that suited my taste and it ended up being somebody had knit with a different colorway of this same yarn the hush sweater by tin can knits and i really liked the design it's one of their newer patterns i think from either maybe fall 2022 i would have to look that up but it's definitely one of their more recent designs like more recently designed than the love note sweater which so many of us have knit myself included um and so i just thought you know what let's just go for it let's let's knit this pattern and i really love it i knit the yoke super quickly when i started in march i kind of i kind of zipped through that and then, you know, because I didn't start it till March, I don't remember when in March, it could have been the end of March. The weather started warming up as we went into spring. I think I had finished the body and then I put it away when the weather warmed up because this is a pretty warm sweater with, you know, being alpaca and merino. And so I put it away and then I dug it out again uh, just at the start of this year, it was it was one of my unfinished projects, my lingering whips from 2023, 
and so it was on my list of whips to knock out before the weather warmed up too much and so I finally did that. Last time I podcast I had had one sleeve done and now the whole sweater is complete. So um, you know I do not have any finished object pictures but I'll just back up a little bit so you can see my waistband of my jeans hits me here my natural waist is up here um, and so I made the body probably about 12 inches or so I don't remember because that was last year um, but yeah um, I just I did the fitted sleeves so the pattern gives you a lot of options so this is a great sweater also if you are a fairly new knitter and want to venture into doing some simple cables just like the flax sweater which is a free pattern of theirs where you have lots of different options so did the sweater they gave you an option on the neckline and an option on whether you wanted to do sleeve shaping which I elected to do, or to just do straight sleeves without any decreases. So I did the sleeve shaping and did the decreases, and then for the neckline, you could either do ribbing or you could do this I-cord, like kind of like rolled neckline, and I'll kind of go a little closer. I just thought that that was a slightly more elegant look for this sweater and more in line with what I was interested in making for myself. And so that's what I went with and I'm really happy with it. So that's what I'm wearing today, the Hush Sweater by Tin Can Knits. And that is officially my first object from February. And then, so I just wanted to quickly let you know, let's see, I have my list of like, I'm doing my Knit 24 in 24 and that was my fifth finished object for 2024 so I have eight total so we'll get through the rest of those now as we go forward into the finished objects section of this podcast okay finished objects Okay, so my second finished object is kind of a fun one. It was a super quick knit. I started these on March 4th and I finished them on March 8th. And I should have grabbed them before I started talking about them, but we're rolling with it today to save myself on editing. These are Oh, these have fuzzies stuck to them because they've been in Owen's room. These were something I made for Owen, and I knit him a pair of lobster claw mitts. And this is a pattern, it's called Lobster Claw Knits, and it's by Morehouse Designs. So, I knit these, I'm going to be doing this now as I talk. I knit these for Owen for his Sebastian costume. So he was Sebastian in his community theater production of The Little Mermaid Jr. And they weren't, they didn't really have much of a costume for him. So, you know, we just dressed him in red and I just said, you know, he needs some mittens at least because of the claws. And so I searched for some mitten patterns. I was really just gonna knit him like the what is it called like the very simple mitts or you know whatever those mitts are that uh, also by tin can knits that are free that i've knit for him every single time don't remember the exact name but i was just gonna do those but then i found the lobster claw mitts and i just thought well that would be really fun <laughs> i've got to stop doing this you guys Okay, so um, so this was a really quick knit. I knit these with stash yarn also that I had. I had one skein of Susan B. Anderson's, she's Barrett Wilco. I, I can't stop doing this. This is gonna get them, I just can't stop. Um, this was her home worsted weight yarn and the color is Poppy and I, had this leftover from her mother hen pattern when I knit the 
the hen of hers, I ended up ordering all the colors of the yarn individually because I really wanted to make the hen as a gift, but her hen kits were sold out. So I just purchased all the colors separately. The, the great thing about her yarn is like you can always find a use for it. So I didn't need very much of the red for the hen pattern. So I had almost a full skein left over. And so, yeah, so the fun thing about these mittens is the the construction was very unique, as you can probably imagine. So I, um, the, the pattern is written for actually kids size. So Owen has like maybe, I have very small hands and Owen's hands are a little bit smaller than mine. So I had him try them on and what I ended up having to do was like the mitten was gonna end around here for the cuff. So after, it, th these were like two separate triangles that you kind of put inside it's hard to explain, but you kind of, you knit two pretty similar length triangles, but then the way that you put them inside and then you join them together, kind of in a three needle bind off, like that is how you knit them, but without the bind off part. So you're just knitting both of them together in the next round. Um, and so then after I did that, I just continued for a couple of inches before moving on to the cuff until it was long enough for him. So these fit me, they fit him a little bit better than, than they fit me because I have slightly bigger hands, but they were for him, not for me, so I didn't make them to fit me. Um, but yeah, I was able to try them on, here I go again. I was able to try them on as I went and had a good idea of when they were gonna fit him. And then just before I decided to bind off, I just made sure that, stuck, stuck it on his hand, make, made sure it was a really good length. This is just so fun to wear, I really need to stop. So anyway, this was a really quick, simple mitt. And this would work for lobsters, for crabs, you know, just, just for fun, but what a great little addition for like, if you're gonna have somebody be dressing up as Sebastian or a lobster or something for Halloween, then I definitely recommend this pattern. It's easy if you wanted to modify it for adults, you just have to change the stitch count. I used the same exact stitch count for the large children's size, but then just kept knitting length because the width was not a problem. Okay, I better take these off and let's move on to my next finished object because this is gonna get annoying if it's not already gotta put these away okay <laughs> so next up is oh my gosh i can't quite reach it here we go i knit a hat you guys another stash hat i knit the manhattan hat bulky and this is a pattern by tori Yu. I've been eyeing this pattern for a long time and I was also just like wanting to knit a couple of quick projects for my knit 24 and 24. So let's see, the lobster claw mitts were my sixth finished object of 2024 and this is number seven. And I love this hat so much. So I used stash yarn and one of the reasons, I think I might have showed this hat on the last podcast but it wasn't very far along I can't remember but one of the reasons that I decided to use this yarn is that it was recommended in the pattern as one of the suggested yarns and I knew I had just a single skein of what is it the Brooklyn Tweed is that what it is yeah Brooklyn Tweed Quarry and the colorway is Citrine and so I had purchased this in somebody's D stash maybe five or six years ago. It's been a while and I haven't known what to knit with it. And so, yeah, so, oh my gosh, this, it's so good. I love the decreases, the decreases at the top and the hat shaping. The, um, the yarn has a lot of depth to it and it's, it's just beautiful. I have like a, a fall jacket that is kind of in, um, these colorways too, but 
oh my gosh Let's see if I can get like my head a little bit lower I really like this so much this is officially my new favorite hat I, I just really like it so I knit um, she's got a lot of different sizes I knit the adult size small because I have a pretty small head and it's nice and snug so I probably could have gotten away was it ex maybe it was adult extra small I can't remember if it was adult small or extra small it's the smallest adult size that I knit so whatever that is I probably could have gotten away with the next size up but honestly like this feels perfect it feels really really good it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off but it also doesn't feel too tight and like I just I really for the first time like I like this amount of height in the hat and I just think it's just warm and it's ah I, I really like it so much so I am really interested in making more of these hats plus she also has other hat designs based on like what is it like the brownstone hat or something I don't know but she's got the same pattern available in many other weights of yarn so I'm really um, I'm really interested to find some other single skeins that I have and knit this up and just have more hats um, yeah because I don't have a lot of accessories I just don't knit a lot of accessories I'm always going for sweaters and occasionally I'll knit a shawl and mostly I'll knit socks as my accessories but I don't ever go to knit hats and mittens for myself I'm always knitting those for like either my husband or my son but never for me so yeah I just I don't know they're so quick and simple and this is gonna be really great it's still cool enough out right now where I can wear this we are I said it's what is it March 23rd so last week was we kind of had our first like false spring which is you know the season here we get like false spring and then winter comes back um, so now we're in that like second winter or third winter. I don't even know but so this this will be good for like another week or two if I need to wear it so yeah I'm excited to have this right now and then I'll have it ready to go for next season and then I think she also has mittens maybe Manhattan mittens or something I'd have to look but I don't have enough of this yarn to knit those uh, but that's okay I think I think when I knit some of her when I knit this up in some other yarns then I might be able to make myself a matching set I might have enough yarn in another type of yarn for you know a hat with mittens together but yeah I'm just I'm really pleased I did block this that's because this was really easy to block so I did block it and that is finished object number three for this podcast and number seven for 2024 and I have one more to share with you and that is leading me to want to buy sock blockers all right so I have knit a pair of socks <clears throat> for myself and I tried my first summer Lee pattern so I'm so happy with it I really like it I knit the wide rib sock set pattern in the so she has like it's a whole set I don't remember how many different patterns maybe five different patterns in the set that you get and I knit the color block version because I wanted to use my spring fling mini skein set so this is one of my naturally dyed yarns so this is stop drop and knit in my new yarn section and the colorway is called spring fling and this is naturally dyed completely with avocado and goldenrod so there's five different colors here a pink a gray a purple all of those were dyed with avocado and then the green and the yellow were both dyed with goldenrod so I had this in my March 1st release and I think that I had I had 10 of these available I think there's only four left now 
So if you like this and want to support me, then go grab one before these are sold out. This has probably been my most popular mini skein set colorway of the release easily. So I'll share this a little bit more later. But so it's um, 100 grams total you get with that. And then each mini skein is 20 grams. And so I thought when I saw like her Summer Lee's wide rib sock pattern, I thought, well, let me try knitting that because I know 100 grams is plenty for a pair of socks for myself. I've got very small feet and I do have yarn left over. And my socks, I need sock blockers, guys, because these look ridiculous, but they're really, they're decent length socks. Um, usually with 100 grams, I can get a pair of socks for both myself and Owen, although now that his feet are just about as big as mine, I think that that might change. Like I might need to supplement with some other mini skeins or something if I wanted to squeeze out another pair. But yeah, so because these socks, I do not have sock blockers. And I was looking, I was trying to take pictures of these socks. I'll stick some pictures of what they look like on my feet so that you can properly see them. Socks are one of those things that are really difficult to show. And I mean, I've been podcasting for more than three years now. I've never felt like it was super necessary for me to have sock blockers. But now that I am trying to work up my own yarn into some samples and some actual items, I want to be able to photograph them nicely and to show them nicely on the podcast and just like the way that this particular pattern is, the wide rib completely scrunches it all up and you just can't see anything. So I'm going to put it on my hand so that you can just at least get a better idea. So this is the toe and the wide rib. So it's really, really simple. A rib pattern like this, I will knit this pattern again. So that's the bottom. I did double pointed needles, so I do have a little bit of a space there in mine. I've not perfected that yet. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I did, yeah, so I did the heel all in the gray. And then I used the other colors. I had, um, yeah, so I started with the goldenrod so the yellow was done with the goldenrod flowers and then the purple so the pink was also that was avocado pits and then both the gray and the purple were modified with iron in the after bath those were from different dye baths with different avocados and so sometimes you get more of a purple sometimes you get more of a gray depending and so those were all with avocado. And then the green was the goldenrod. This actually, this particular exact shade of yellow was this green modified with iron. So that's how I got all of the different colors. And I just, they look so happy, not scrunched up so much, but yeah. So I think I need to invest in some sock blockers now. I've been resisting for all of these years. I'm like, why would you block your socks? They're just going to go on your feet. And now that I'm trying to like promote them as, you know, things that I want somebody to purchase from my shop and want it to look all nice and pretty. I am now seeing why just having one pair of sock blockers would be an asset for my brand, for my company here. So that's on my list of things to purchase, but this is officially my last finished object of this podcast. <laughs> I can't think. And my eighth out of my 24. So I am officially with this pair of socks one third of the way to my goal of knitting 24 finished objects in 2024. So that feels really good because we're also like I'm a third of the way, but we're only a quarter of the way through the calendar year. So I feel like maybe this is the year I can do it. Um, I'm usually really close, but I didn't make my 23 and 2023 20, goal last year because I just 
went into like a period where I didn't knit that much, but I'm knitting a ton now and I'm right on track to meet my goals. So I feel really good about that. Um, yeah, I would absolutely knit this pattern again. Um, I'm just going to toss these over there. Those, that pattern is perfect for my narrow, tiny feet. I always like ribbing in a sock. They just, they hug. I have such, such narrow feet that they just hug my feet so nicely. So they're an absolute perfect fit. I did the smallest size and yeah, I'm going to knit more of Summer Lee's sock patterns. That was my first one. Really like them. She's got a little podcast going now too, which on YouTube, which has been really fun to watch. And I'm very interested in pur purchasing at some point her book, which is only been out for a few weeks now, I think. So she's got a sock book that came out and I'm pretty sure that like all the pre-orders and everything, like I looked it up and everything was already sold out. So, um, hopefully she'll release like another, another batch of them and maybe I'll be able to pick it up at some point. But yeah, uh, let me know if you've got her book, how it is and what you're knitting from it. Okay, so that is all of my finished objects. I can't believe, I can't remember the last time I had like four finished objects in a podcast. Um, it's been a while, but it feels, it feels really good. I'm going to just try to keep moving because we still have a lot to talk about. So let's go into whips. I have three whips to share with you guys today. I have more than that, but these are the three most active whips that I have been focusing my attention on the most since my last episode, which was like six or seven weeks ago. I am so excited about this first one that I'm going to share with you. When I shared it last time, I had just only knit a swatch and decided on my color order and now I have split for the sleeves and oh my gosh, I've separated the body and I have done the whole yoke and I can't wait to share this with you. You guys, this is the Stripes sweater by Andrea Mowry. I am knitting this in Stop, Drop and Knit, my naturally dyed yarn. This is my sport base which is 100 percent baby alpaca i know about alpaca being really drapey and i just i just don't care i feel like it's going to be absolutely fine for this sweater um i love it i i am so in love with this sweater i cannot wait this is like the stripes they take a while, but it, it is. It's completely potato chippy, just seeing it all come together. I love the colors so much. Um, I will talk about the yarn in a little bit. I'll show you like all the individual colors and tell you what they were naturally dyed with. Um, I do not have full-sized skeins of this base in my shop at the moment. I never did. Um, I had dyed a few for myself and I had some a, a bunch of these same colors that I had um, dyed onto mini skeins and so there are these colors available as mini skein sets in my shop so if you are enjoying these colors and oh, I mean mushrooms these were these were dyed with mushrooms and some barks and nuts and so like half of the colors were mushrooms I just the mushroom colors amaze me every single time there are still baby alpaca mini skein sets available in my shop and that's all I'm gonna say a lot of them are selling out in certain colors over this past week but there are definitely still some available so um, yeah, I want to talk about the pattern first. So I am knitting size three. I did a gauge swatch, which was like when I was 
sharing that with you last time, I was testing not only the, the gauge, but also the order of the colors to make sure that I liked them, which I did. So I kept the order of colors from my swatch and I am perfectly on gauge. So the back of it, I kept forgetting, <laughs> like for half of the stripes, I forgot to do the jogless technique which she explains in the pattern, and for half of them I remembered. So uh, the back of this is a little bit of a mess. Like you can, you know, just from changing the yarns, you can see that'll get cleaned up when I, um, I think the ones with the biggest noticeable parts are the ones where I forgot to do the jogless part. And then where it's a little bit neater underneath is where I was really focusing on remembering it. But I'll be able to clean that up quite a bit in, uh, you know, when I work on weaving in the ends and everything. If it really bothers me, I can always like duplicate stitch over where I forgot to do it, but I don't think it's gonna bother me that much. It's, it's just the top of the back and half the time my hair is down anyway and you're not going to be able to see it unless you're looking real close but I am really concentrating for the whole rest of the sweater to like remember to do that because it is so simple to do and it makes a really big difference in how polished the stripes look in the end um so I just I just wanted to point that out like you can see for these stripes down here I did remember to do it so it's just a matter of like those ends getting tightened in the finishing uh, process when I'm weaving in the ends and everything. But then there's like a couple of <laughs> spots up here where I didn't quite remember to do it and we were still increasing uh, for the yoke. So it's a little bit more obvious. But again, I think I'll be able to clean that up. Not too worried about it. I just wanted to mention it because, you know, being very transparent in my knitting mistakes as well. But yeah, so I am at the point now where, let's see, I split for the sleeves and I am now on like the second, the second color there. So that's how it is looking so far. I love it so much. Oh my goodness. This makes me so happy. So happy. Ah. Uh, just gonna smile for a second and maybe I'll get a screenshot for the thumbnail a ridiculous screenshot <laughs> um yeah so podcaster problems you guys yeah thumbnails on a rainy day I don't know what I'm gonna do but I'm really really happy with it the colors oh my gosh all right I'll show you all so the ribbing is black walnut the purple is a type of coral mushroom called Ramaria. It, it's almost like a periwinkle kind of purple. It's, it's so beautiful. Purple's my favorite, you guys know that. And then the yellow, that beautiful golden yellow, is also a mushroom called, uh, oh gosh, I, I know it's Dyer's polypore, but the Latin name is something like Phaeolus Schweinitzi, or I, I can't pronounce it. But then we've got this beautiful sage green and the, so skip over the peach, but the green and that next brown, so that brown is different from the ribbing brown. Those were with the same mushroom as well at different pH levels. It was a mushroom called the Lephora terrestris. And yeah, I was able to get two different colors just based on what I did in the dye bath. And then that peach, in the middle there was an exhaust bath from sassafras bark, and that was a leftover dye bath that I used for my very first month collaborating with Tabitha over at Long Island Yarn and Farm for our Life on Long Island natural dye collaboration that we've been doing. So I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But yeah, so this is like the project I am currently most obsessed with working on. Um, I kind of want to plow through it a bit. I don't know. I don't know if I'll get it done. I mean, I might do the three quarter length sleeves version as Andrea models in the cover, sh the, the cover photo for this pattern. I think she's knitted up in a couple different 
uh, like styles too, like full length sleeves, longer cropped with th three quarter length sleeves. So um, yeah, so depending on whether I do three quarter length sleeves or full length sleeves, maybe I'll get it done and be able to wear it before the weather gets too warm. But if not, these colors are gonna be so pretty in the fall too. I'm so happy with them. So uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. That is my first whip. I have two more, so let me dig those out. These yarns are a bit tangled up in my bag, but all right, let's see. My needles, all right. Yeah, I can't tell which one, which of these yarns is actually attached to my project now, but I am knitting a pair of socks and we're all twisted in my, um, in the cable of the needles. That's okay. So these, this set of mini skeins, which does not look pretty the way I'm showing them to you because they're all kind of tangled and everything, but this was the... February loving life was the colorway this was the yarn from my naturally dyed collaboration with Tabitha life on Long Island so every month I focus on dyeing a different colorway for her and there's only 20 kits available but I get to keep one for myself so I actually dye 21 um, and so we did a mini skein set for February because I she really wanted like reds and pinks and I knew that what you could forage on Long Island for me was going to be mushrooms to get those colors and just the quantity of dye material available would not get me the color of what I knew she was looking for on 20 skeins. But I was confident that I had collected enough to dye four. So what I did was I, I used every single exhaust bath of those mushrooms. And so I have one rolling away from me on the floor. It wouldn't be the stop drop in a podcast without yarn falling and rolling away. Um, yes, every, every episode, guys, everyone. Uh, so, the first dye bath, I got this beautiful saturated red, so beautiful, still pink, like it's, it's just such an interesting color, so pretty. The second one, and they're dropping again, the second one, I got this nice deep salmon. And then the next one, we got a little bit more of like a carnation pink just with exhaust baths from the same exact mushroom. And then the last two are pretty similar. They're slightly different. The last two, they're very close though. Um, I can't even tell which is which. You can see like the one has a slightly more orange tinge to it and then this one has a slightly more uh, very pale pink tinge to it. So this was my gradient that I dyed for that collaboration with Cortinarius semi-sanguineus mushrooms. We're gonna talk about mushrooms more later, but I am so excited because I decided to knit my first pair of Colorwork socks. And this is a, it's a long project right now. I, I've only worked on it a few nights, but they've been spaced out with like several weeks in between my, my actively working on them. But, this is what I've been knitting with them. And oh my goodness, you guys, I am in love. So again, this was a set that I did for February. So we were in Valentine's Day mode. So I chose a pattern with heart motifs in it. And I am, it's got a afterthought heel. So I am working on the foot right now. I am hoping that these are gonna fit. I got a little bit too tight right around, um, where is it? Actually, I can't even feel it now, but like 
right before here, I, I could tell my tension tightened up just a little bit, but I'm hoping that when I put the heel in, that won't matter and that I can get this on my leg. So it's been so much work. It would be so sad if it didn't fit. Um, it fits like the part that I can get on my foot fits really, really well. There's, there's quite a bit of, there's quite a bit of stretch to it. And I just think it's, it's so pretty. I, I just, every time I die with the mushrooms, I am just absolutely, absolutely amazed at just how gorgeous colors I get. So, yeah, so I'm about like halfway through the foot now. This pattern is called, let me see, I gotta get it because I had to search for a pattern. Sheepishly Besotted Socks, and the designer's name is Anita Gran, Gran, I'll put it on the screen. I'll have all this stuff in my uh, description underneath the video for you guys to access at your leisure. Um, I'm just, I'm so excited. Like I started knitting with these and wondered why I have not been knitting colorwork socks all this time. Mostly I knit self-striping socks because it's like my just go-to stuck in that mindless, mindless knitting project. But I just really thought that I would go for some socks with this yarn. I wanted to do something really special with it and I'm just, it is so much fun to knit. And so I'm just really excited. I hope it fits. I will be trying it on for sure. Um, I guess I could go ahead and insert the heel if I grabbed some double pointed needles. Like I could probably just work on that now so that I would know for sure. But honestly, I might be too lazy to take that extra step and do it. I'll probably just want to like finish the foot and then just go back in and do it. I don't know. I don't know. I just, yeah, we'll, we'll see what mood I'm in, but I really, really love it. It's so beautiful. I was so, I just, yeah. Hey bunnies. I think these are gonna be so warm too. So, I mean like hand knit socks are warm, but like color work hand knit socks, I think a new world has opened up to me. I have like color work sock knitting books and everything. I just, I just haven't done them yet. And I just, I think it's because I always purchase self striping yarn and yeah, I don't know. I just, I just don't grab like solid skeins very often, but I'm sure that I have things in my stash that could be easily transformed into color work socks. I just have to dig around and pull different, different colors and yarns together and, and just find something. This might be the start of a very new addiction though. A lot more work, but so exciting. I've done a lot of color work before, but always in sweaters and in shawls, but never in socks. I don't know why. So I did try one color work sock pattern last spring, but it was just like a little bit of color work and the sock ended up being like really huge on me. So then I got really hesitant to do it, but like I've never tried a color work like where the whole entire sock is color work. So, uh, very excited. Okay, so that is my second whip that I've been most actively working on. And there's there's one more that I actually, I started it I think in February and then I kind of put it down and forgot about it and I need to pick it back up again. But I've never shown it on the podcast so I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you now. And then I'll show it to you again whenever I actually pick it up and work on it. So let me go grab that one. Okay, I just gathered everything, so uh, I'm, I'm dropping it already, you guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, let's try this again. All right, my third and final whip that I'm going to share with you today is the Rosemont sweater, and the designer is Sia Abbott Bullimer. And this is a pattern that I discovered through Wonderland Yarns. So I actually got this yarn as a gift 
from them because I am officially a brand ambassador, though I've been a pretty lousy brand ambassador recently because I have a lot of very large projects going on with their yarn that I haven't finished yet. Um, but I did get this yarn from them a full year ago, maybe about 13 months ago, and with the intent to knit this sweater, and I finally started it in February, and um, it's a fingering weight sweater. I have just a little bit of it done, so it's really, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but the color is, you know, <laughs> it's like after holding up all the uh, naturally dyed yarn projects, this is like so bright, but I love it just the same. I love bright colors, I love jewel tones. I might not be able to dye like the super bright, happy, like jewel tone colors with the natural dyes, but that's okay. Like everything is beautiful to me in its, in its own way. And yeah, just these colors make me super, super happy too, just in a different way than my natural dyes. So there's this cute little like baby cable pattern design. This is like a funnel neck and it's got kind of like a rolled so it'll roll down and I'll, I'll stick a picture if I haven't already I'll stick a picture of the design of the sweater on the screen so um, I'm knitting the large size because I think there were only five sizes available um, I just I don't know for some reason I usually knit size three so I wasn't convinced that the medium was gonna be like the right size for me. I don't really know. Maybe it's gonna end up being too big. I have I have no idea. I think it'll be fine. I usually wear my things oversized. It's not like a super oversized, it's not actually an oversized design at all, but I don't know. I was hesitant to go with size two. So I'm knitting the large and we're just gonna hope that that works out. But I am using, so if you knit one of the two smaller sizes, you only need one skein of the blossoms. But for the large, extra large, and double extra large, you need two skeins, and you need to manage your yarn a little bit for the fade. So that's that's what I've been doing. Um, because I'm knitting the smallest of the three two skein sizes, I, I'm just kind of using my eyeballs to kind of gauge when I want to just cut to the next color because I wanna make sure I get to all of the colors in the blossom scale. I'm not exactly sure because you're supposed to kind of go till it runs out but again I'm knitting like size large and so it doesn't exactly tell me when to switch if I'm having to manage two skeins. So I'm just kind of trying to wing it and figure it out but it's it's so pretty. So these are exactly the same but one of them is wound with the light color on the inside and one of them is wound with the light color on the outside. So they're super super beautiful this is their blossoms skein and this is on their mary ann base which is a fingering weight base it's such generous yardage this one has 475 yarns it's four ounces it is 85 percent superwash merino 15 percent nylon so I'm also planning, because I know I'm going to have extras, I'm going to knit myself, like, with the leftovers from this sweater, a pair of socks to kind of go with it. And so I also have two skeins of what's kind of like the main color here. And this is really, really beautiful. This is also the Marianne base. So, like, these are going to go together in the sweater. And um, this one is, what is the colorway of this one? Is called Blueberry Tart, and this is color number 160. So did I say what the other one was? The Blossoms Yarn, I don't think I said. It's called Bearded Iris, and it's color number 29. So yeah, so this is um, a sweater. I, I saw it and I wanted to knit the sweater right away, but I had so many other things going on. Um, I just think those colors and the speckles are going to go so nicely together. So as you can see, I started with the 
lighter part. It's such a mess. It's all tangled up. Um, so I started with the fuchsia part, which is going to be at the neck. And then we're going to like gradient down into the darker purple and the purple and then like the dark like blueberry blue and then the whole rest of the sweater after the yoke will be in the blueberry tart so it'll be different it'll be really fun and that's everything that is currently on my needles for whips so I want to go and talk a little bit about some of the naturally dyed <clears throat> yarn collaboration projects I've been working on. I also have a really, really unbelievable story about maybe having discovered a new mushroom, which was unexpected. So I'm going to tell that story in the next section. And then, um, so I'll have all these sections, you know, time stamped in the video so you can come back and skip ahead at any point. As I said, this is going to be a very long podcast today. So I'm going into naturally dye section now, and then we'll go into spinning and finish with acquisitions. So there's still so much to get through. Oh my goodness. So it's so fun to catch up. Why don't I just podcast more often? I don't know. Perfectionist. Okay. I'll be, I, I gotta like deal with this yarn here in my lap and then, then let's talk natural dye stuff. It just started absolutely downpouring outside. It's been like a really steady rain this whole time, but oh my gosh, like the sky has just opened up and yeah, it's like, just sheets and sheets of pouring down water. So you might hear some noise. I don't know if it's gonna be thunderstorming at all, but we're just gonna keep recording because there's still so much to talk about. Okay, so I have mentioned now that I've been doing a natural dye collaboration between my shop. I'm naturally dyeing for Tabitha over at Long Island Yarn and Farm, and this is a year-long collaboration that we started back in October and we just have finished the first six months of it. So it's called Life on Long Island because everything that I dye is foraged on Long Island and she supports other Long Island businesses by finding fun things to go into the kits with the yarn and all of that fun stuff. So I just wanted to show you the yarn that I dyed for the last month, which was March, well, this month, but it released just a week and a half ago. And I used acorns, and so we called this one a corny life. Get it? Acorns, a corny, haha. -ha. Um, and so this is on her bulky base, and I just thought it was, it came out so, so beautifully. So yeah, I had foraged the acorns from lots of different places around Long Island over the course of the fall. I just took my time collecting them, building up a nice stock of nuts, which I squirreled away for this project. And I didn't have to use any kind of pre-mordant to get the color to set on the yarn because acorns have so many natural tannins in them. But what I did do was I dipped the yarn into an iron after bath to darken the color considerably. So we started off with a much lighter brown and after the iron dip, it turned into this just gorgeous color. Like it's, I think there's so much complexity in it. It's it got tones of gray, tones of dark brown, but also like some greenish tones in there, I think. And so, yeah, so this was the yarn from the March collaboration and she paired it with some nut butters. Um, so everybody received like four different samples of different flavors of nut butter from a local business on Long Island. I think it's called Laurel's Nut Butter. So that was super fun. And so I just wanted to share um, the 
the pattern that I am planning to use. Now Tabitha's bulky yarn does not have very much yardage. It's just 50 yards. So it's really difficult to find patterns where you can use just one skein. It's possible, but not easy. And so I actually still have my goldenrod. This was our December collaboration, which again, I, I used goldenrod and dipped it in iron. And this was called Grinchy Life because I thought that the color really resembled the Grinch and we were going for, you know, something festive and everything. So I'm actually going to pair these two colors together and I'm going to make a hat. And the pattern that I'm going to use is called, uh, what is it called? Lavender Dip Toque Pattern. Now she used a purple for hers, which is probably why she called it lavender dip. So mine will be more like a goldenrod dip. So I'm gonna do the, uh, the goldenrod for the bottom portion of the hat and then the top half of the hat. So it's basically like a color blocked hat. The whole bottom half will be goldenrod. The top half will be the acorn. And then there will be a pom-pom when I actually get out and purchase some pom-poms. I still have to put a pom-pom on the other hat that I made with the January yarn because I just don't have a pom-pom and I haven't ordered any pom-poms. So I'm gonna need to get two pom-poms now, but I'll have a couple hats. And um, so Claire Jackson is the designer. She goes by also Perfectly Knotted. So I'll have her information in the description and the picture of the pattern that I'm knitting will go up on the screen. And yeah, so I just wanted to show you my plans. But this is the, every month we do a different color and a different weight of yarn. So December we used a bulky and for March we also used a bulky. And so I'm gonna just pair these two together. And yeah, I think that's gonna be really fun. So I'm excited about that. And now, you guys, it is story time. I need to get my yarns. So go grab a cup of tea. I will be right back. Okay, that was quick. I am back. Okay, so I have a really fun story that I have not yet shared on the podcast because it's just been so long since I recorded. So... I, after doing the February Life on Long Island natural dye collaboration with the Cortinarius semi-sanguineus mushrooms, I wanted to do some mushroom dyeing for myself. And the original plan was that I was going to use these mushrooms for some shop yarn. And what I thought that I had, the mushroom that I thought I had collected, turns out it wasn't the same mushroom. And it's actually something not normally found <laughs> over here. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. <clears throat> I've got some stuff in my throat. So <clears throat> there's there's so many types of Cortinarius mushrooms and a lot of them haven't been thoroughly researched yet. So it's it's like a category of mushrooms that is currently being thoroughly and heavily researched around the world. Um, North America is getting a little bit, we're a little bit behind from what I understand where Europe is in documenting various types of this mushroom. So I was aware, you know, I find the semi sanguineous variety all the time. And so what I thought that I had found was just the plain old sanguine, sanguineous variety. I'm going to insert some pictures as I speak so you guys can see the difference. So there's there's so many different types. The semi actually, you know, semi means partially, right? Like half. And without the semi, it's it's like full. So that's how I think of it. Like partially red, full red. So I had thought that instead of having like the half blood cap mushrooms, that what I was using in the dye bath now so I used the, the semi sanguineus for the Life on Long Island collaboration, which I showed that colorwork sock pattern. And 
so uh, those have like a ochre, yellowish, brownish colored cap and stem, and the gills underneath are a bright red. There's another type of Cortinarius where like the entire mushroom is much darker red, um, like the caps and the stems are also red. And so that was what I had found. I didn't find that many. I had a much, much smaller amount. And the mushrooms, there's a big size difference between the two. But since I don't often find just the blood cap variety, which is the Cortinaria sanguineus, um, I didn't have anything to compare these two other than the semi-sanguineus type. And so I just assumed that what I had collected was just the blood cap, the blood, blood, yeah, the blood web cap, the sanguineus, the full-on sanguineus. So when I posted originally what I had in the dye bath and, and you know, shared that on social media, um, Alyssa Allen messaged me and she said, you know, I don't think that that's actually what that mushroom is. I don't know what variety that is and I think you should share the pictures of the mushroom in this Cortinarius mushroom identification group, which is run by, I guess, the top two researchers of the Cortinarius mushroom in the United States. So she said, you know, these are the top researchers. They know what they're talking about. Send the pictures over to them and see what variety they think it is. But I don't think it's the blood cap. I don't think it's the sanguineus. So I did. And it turns out that what I have collected is not, has not been documented. There's maybe only been one other sighting of this mushroom ever. That's at least at, like that's been documented. Um, and that was by one of these two researchers in the group. And he had discovered the mushroom on Cape Cod. So apparently this was maybe like, if it's the same mushroom, this was probably only the second ever documented sighting of it in the United States was this mushroom that I had found. And I had no idea, so I, assuming it was just this standard red Cortinarius mushroom, I had only collected like a sandwich Ziploc bag size full of these mushrooms, not even all the way full, maybe like halfway full, like maybe 40, like not that many, they're really tiny. So I just threw them all into the dye pot, I didn't know any better. And they asked if I had any of the mushrooms left because they wanted me to send them over for DNA sequencing so that they could identify exactly what variety of mushroom this is. If it's something that they have previously discovered, obviously it would be named that, but if it turns out to be some brand new type of Cortinarius that nobody's ever discovered before, Alyssa said, you might even get a mushroom named after you out of this. So I had Unfortunately, I had already used the mushrooms. I still have them, but they've been cooked several times in the dye bath as I extracted the color. But I know exactly the spots that I collected them in. It's not harmful to collect mushrooms because the spores keep them dispersing. They're just, they're the fruiting bodies of the mycelium, which is underground. So there's never any harm done when you are foraging mushrooms. When the conditions are right with the rain and the soil and all that stuff, they will come back. So it's not like I've destroyed any possibility of like this mushroom being super rare and coming back or anything like that. I just don't happen to have any that I can send off to have sequenced right now. So long story short, we're gonna hope that I can find these mushrooms again when the weather uh, cooperates. They should start coming back around October or November. So I will be out there looking to collect these again and I will set some aside and send them off to have them appropriately sequenced to discover their true identity, and who knows, maybe I'll end up with a mushroom named after me. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever expect that I would end up contributing to science or mycology 
through my natural dyeing, but here we are and it's pretty cool. This mushroom though, so I don't know how many pictures I've put up at this point, but they're really tiny. The cap, compared to the semi-sanguineus, so the semi-sanguineus, I've got a side-by-side -side picture. The semi-sanguineus that I use most often is about like this big in height, and these were about this big, fully sized grown. So there's a huge size difference. And again, the color of the cap and the stem are also quite different. The little ones that I used for this project of who knows what mushroom it is are much darker brown, even to red in certain lights. I'll show you the picture. I've got some great pictures with like full on sunlight on them and you can just see how much red is in there. Oh, I should, I'm gonna show you these, but then I should also grab the yarn that I showed you already with the sock yarn, just so I can show you the comparison between the reds that I got. But these are the yarns. So I did the same thing, I did another gradient, and these are the yarns that I dyed with who knows what mushroom, what kind of cortinarius this is. You guys look at this blood red. It's like a brick red skein. Like, it's amazing. I will not be selling these yarns. Eventually, I'll probably use them in a project for myself. But, you know, these yarns are going to be for me. And they're very special. And hopefully I'll find them again. And then maybe, you know, maybe I'll have another opportunity to dye with them and then can, you know, put some of the yarns from those in the shop in the future. But for right now, these are these are just like a, a personal special special project and will not be going in my shop. But look at the color, the saturation of this color, you guys. It's like a brick red. It is unbelievably saturated and gorgeous. And to think about how much color I was able to get out of such a small amount of mushrooms. I mean, this is 100 grams times five full skeins. So the second dye bath, the first exhaust bath, gave me this color. And you know, from here on, the rest of this gets to look very similar to the other yarns that I showed you previously. This one's the third dye bath, so the second exhaust bath, and then the third exhaust bath. You know, so we're, we're looking pretty similar to the other yarns, but these are just so special. And then the final skein that I dyed um, was, was this one here. So um, they're kind of squished together, but you can see those beautiful reds. And so just thinking that I might have discovered some mushroom unknowingly is pretty cool and completely unexpected. I just want to grab the um, the yarns again from the semi sanguineus just so I can like show you the difference in the colors and how similar they are, but the difference in this first one. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna like at least dig out the darkest one. So the darkest one that I was able to get from the semi sanguineus, and we're stuck again, was this. So look at. Look at the difference in the depth of color between the two varieties of Cortinarius. I thought that this was an impressive reddish pink to get, but this brick red is so good. And then, um, yeah, I'd say this is probably pretty similar now. Let me get the, uh, the second one. So the first, uh, this was the, the most salmon color of the other skeins. So there's still so much more depth of color here. But I think the rest of the gradient looks, looks pretty similar. So I won't, I won't dig the rest out. They're, they're all pretty much the same at that point. Um, but I'm just, I'm just, by these two especially, but especially the brick red, just blown away. So this is the same base uh, as my sweater. This is also 100% 
baby alpaca. This is a sport weight yarn that I dyed it on. And so the alpaca like just took these colors so beautifully. Just, this is so nice. I've never dyed a color this saturated with mushrooms before. It's just, I don't know, this is so stinking special. I'm just really excited about it. So that's my, my mushroom story. There was one other thing. Oh yeah, I wanted to, to share um, a little bit of a quick shop update with you guys. Um, I, I had a spring update in my shop on March 1st and um, I still have some skeins available. So I've got three different mini skein sets. I had a, uh, a worsted update as well, which I had called Zero Waste Worsted, which was using the remnants, all of the exhaust bath, getting all the color I could. And I used different uh, techniques techniques to get like a variegated effect on those yarns. I'm pretty sure that those are mostly sold out right now, so I'm not gonna share those here. But I do have, let me grab them. I do have some of the mini skein sets of each color still available in the shop, and so I just, I wanted to share those. And uh, show them to you guys. So these are the three colorways of mini skein sets that I have added to the shop for my spring update. And this is on my sock base. So it's 80% extra fine merino and it's organic and then it's 20% recycled nylon. And so these are, each of these have five skeins, five mini skeins in them. So these are each 20 grams times five. So it's 100 grams total of five different colors. So I already showed you guys this one. So this is the Spring Fling mini skein set. And this was naturally dyed with avocado and goldenrod. There are, last I checked, four out of the 10 that I had available. Um, this one, I love this one. This is maybe my favorite. This one I call Earthworm because I just really love how like earthy these colors seem. I thought that this mauvish color looked kind of like an earthworm and that all the rest of the colors just looked kind of like the ground and the moss and the dirt and all that stuff. So this is my Earthworm mini skein set. And let's see, the brown and the gray were both dyed with black walnut, one of them with the iron after bath. The mauve was actually a combination. It was an avocado and black walnut combination. So it's a mix of avocado and black walnut. The whitish color, I think, was some kind of mushroom. And then the green was, this bright green is beautiful. That's mulberry leaves. So super, super beautiful. I think this one's my favorite one. I think that there are three of this set still in the shop. And then I have this uh, yellow and gray mini set skein combination. This one I call Hatching Chicks. And it's like three different shades of gray. So there's like a little bit of a gray gradient and then there's two different shades of yellow, a pale yellow and a brighter yellow. And so I call this one Hatching Chicks. And this one's kind of a bunch of different things. The, the darker yellow actually was dyed with pomegranate. And I think that the lighter yellow was like an exhaust bath from mulberry leaves. And then the different types of gray, this, this one here that almost looks like it's got a purple tint, this was actually um, a lichen dye bath that just the color never fully developed. So I just, I used it and it's kind of like a silvery gray that sometimes has a little bit of a hint of purple if you look right. Uh, the darker gray is avocado. 
And then I think that the lightest gray, there's like a medium gray, which I think might be this one here. This one over here, I think is oak bark. I'm just trying to remember correctly. So it's just like a beautiful gradient of yellows and grays together. And in the right light, it looks a little bit like purple, but it's definitely grays. So I don't want anyone to think they're getting purple yarn because it just, you know, the colors look different depending on what light it's in. So, um, but they're, they're grays that, you know, in the right light might have a purplish tint. I think there's four left of this one. So yeah, so these, there's definitely still some available. So if you're interested, um, again, the socks that I showed earlier, I had knit up with the spring fling set and I just, I just love it. So yeah, you could uh, help support me. I'm actually, my yarn shop is actually my way of trying to dig myself out of an immense amount of debt <laughs> from when we were underemployed. My husband and I, we live on Long Island, which is very, very expensive and Although we've, we've considered the possibility of moving, it's not practical to try to restart our music careers in a brand new area at this point in our lives. Um, we now are both employed full time in our professions, which is great, but because we for decades have been underemployed, we had to take on so much debt just to survive for so many years. And for a while we were living rent free, but now we have rent that we need to pay. And the rent on Long Island is crazy expensive. We're just in this tiny little apartment and you know, we're, we're it's every month is, <laughs> we're stretched, we're stretched to our limits. There's really not much left. Um, so it's been really hard just to get rid of the debt with all the interest rates and everything like that. So. We're trying to do what we can to bring in extra money financially. Um, my husband DoorDashes full time in addition to his full time job. I am hoping that I can get my yarn business going so that he can do less and less DoorDashing and so that I can pay off all of my debt. I've got credit card debt, but I also have like over $200,000 in student loans that I now have to pay on again. And it's, it's just, it's just a lot. And you know, life is not easy. So me opening my yarn shop is my attempt to bring in some extra money to pay down this crazy amount of debt that we have by doing something that I love. And yeah, so any purchases that you guys make for me is is truly helping out my family and helping us get in better financial footing and yeah it really does make a difference and i just wanted to thank everybody who placed orders already and has been supporting my shop and has shared my shop and and all of that so it it truly makes a difference you are really helping my family and getting some beautiful naturally dyed yarn all at the same time, which hopefully you will love just as much as I do. So that's, that's my story behind starting up the naturally dyed yarn business. I'm really just trying to find some ways to bring in some more money to get my family's financial situation on more solid ground Eventually, once we pay the debt, hopefully we can start saving for a house, which seems like, you know, some far off dream that is never going to happen. But I do think we could get there and I love what I do and just know that all of your purchases we are truly grateful for. We appreciate so much and they, they really do make a huge difference to our situation. So that is all I have for natural dyeing today. Oh my gosh, that was a lot. I still have so much more to share with you though. I've got spinning, so let's go into spinning.
You guys, I am so excited about today's spinning section because I finally finished spinning my first little tiny skein from Felix. Felix is one of my two English Angora bunnies. Now, this was a little tiny skein of yarn. Oh my gosh, it's a two-ply. I am never going to knit with this. Honestly, this is not good quality Angora right here. I hate to say that because it's from my bunny, but I say that because this I spun from his baby coat, which is not the best for spinning because just it's it's just not like his adult coat. And the baby coat, the staple length is really, really short. And so, um, I don't know. I spun it on my, um, I spun it on my lightest and very first actually little drop spindle here. So I spun it, it needed like to be spun so tightly, like so, so fast and so tightly because the staple length was so short that like it, it's slippery and getting it to stay together. It was challenging, but I also, I mean, not only, I also just don't want to use this because it's just like a little, a little memory skein for my bunny. So I took a couple of pictures of me showing Felix what I did with his baby well. And honestly, he didn't look nearly as impressed as, as I am with it. Um, but I finally, like this, this has been a long little project that just kept getting pushed aside. And I finally just finished, finished it and plied it last week. And it's just so cute. Um, let me, uh, let me undo it. So Al Angora, I keep saying alpaca. I don't know why. I did that in the last podcast. Like every time I meant to say Angora, I said alpaca just not used to saying Angora. Angora has no memory to it. So this is just 100% Angora and I did not blend it with any wool. Typically it's good to use wool, at least 50% wool with your Angora because wool has memory and alpaca will just alpaca. See, I did it again. Angora will just keep stretching out and losing its shape. And yeah, so like if you wanted to knit a hat or something out of 100% Angora, that hat's going to lose its shape. And you know, you're not, it's not going to be like a forever item. Um, but if you mix the Angora with wool, you get like the soft qualities of the Angora, but the memory of the wool. And so it's like the best of both worlds. So I am planning in the future to do some, um, you know, some, some that's not 100% Angora. I can spin Angora 100% still, but then I would probably want to pair it with some other wool yarns when I actually go to knit with it. But this was just like my my first time spinning Felix's wool, and yeah, so this this was just purely like a little a little memory skein. I plan to spin just a similar little memory skein out of Elmer Fuzz's wool too. Um, yeah, but I haven't gotten to that yet. I've mostly been focused on Felix's right now. I've collected Elmer's, of course, but I haven't like sorted it or made it into spinnable Rolex yet. But so, so that's just really exciting that like I finally, I finally have my first little Felix wool. What I have been doing, which I did a little bit more of, I still have a little ways to go, but I have been carding Felix's wool that is good spinning quality into these cute little Rolex and so I have like this whole shoe box bin full of like these clouds these puffy clouds it's they're so soft oh my goodness so there's you can see like there's some I think I showed this last time I've got some that are 
you know, much darker gray and some that are much, much whiter, much, much lighter gray. And the lighter gray ones are from his, more of his undercoats. And the ones that have more of the dark gray contain more of also like his top, his top coat of wool. So he's a, he's officially a black bunny, but they're black as babies. And then as they grow into adult bunnies, they turn into like a more salt and pepper kind of coloring there. So that's just, yeah, I'm really, really excited. I might get out my eel wheel. I have an eel wheel nano, which I have not spun on in years, but I have one and I might decide to spin these on that rather than my drop spindle. I'm not really sure yet, but that's kind of my loose plan. But yeah, so I, I have uh, a few more bags of wool of his. So I, everything from his first year of life up until January. So he was born, he just had his first birthday on February 27th. So he's a little bit more, I guess he's just about to be 13 months old. So I have everything from like his first 10 months of life and I'm gonna be separating out like his wool by calendar year just because I just thought that that was a good way to do it. So I'm gonna be doing the same with Elmer's wool. I have all of his, the bags from his haircuts dated with like what year they are. So I have a few from January, but I'll sort and put into Rolex everything of his from up until January. And then I'm gonna get spinning some Angora wool for my bunnies. I'm so excited about that. So that's my first spinning project that I was really excited to share with you. So hopefully there'll be more to come and then I'll actually spin something that I'm planning to use in a project. I started a new spinning project. It's been a while since it's been a while since I have spun because I tend not to do much spinning in the winter months. And I dug out, I was sorting through all of my um, Paradise Fibers clubs and just getting everything organized. I have so many that I haven't spun yet. And I decided to dig out the April 2023 club and spin the wool from that. So. Uh, this one was called Metamorphosis, and this was using, they, they included yarn from a hand dyer, and what was her, I think Dancing Skies, right? Yeah, Dancing Skies is the dyer's name, and they included a generous, I mean, it says it's four ounces, it feels bigger. Yeah, Dancing Skies fiber art. So this was her label. I don't know if it's going to focus. Are we not focusing anymore? I don't know. Let me see. Are we going to focus? Is it on? Is it off? Um, there we go. Dancing Skies Fiber Arts. So I guess my fo my autofocus thing was not autofocusing for a minute. So this is the fiber. I've already separated it into four similarly sized, what I call bumps. And I am spinning, like, like I always do, I spin, I divide the, the braid into four and then I spin each of the four and then I apply it together. So the colorway that I received was named Patty and I have finished spinning up the first bump and it's really beautiful. It's basically like a rainbow, but without the red. And not really so much yellow, like it's kind of orange, green, blue, and purple with some white in there, which is, why is this not focusing? Which is, is really, really pretty. So I need to get this off of my spindle so that I can get going with the next one. But I think I did this in like a day and a half. Like this went really, really fast. So, and I did it like right around St. Patrick's Day, like the end of the week, right before that weekend. So 
Yeah, it went pretty quickly and I really like it. And so it's just been really fun to get spindle spinning again. Um, I'll be able to do a lot of spinning. Owen's next theater show starts up uh, the first week of April. And by then I'm hoping that the weather will be like more pleasant to sit outside during his rehearsals. The winter show is always tough because even sitting in the car, it's really, really, really cold. So I don't end up really getting a lot of knitting done. I usually try to find like the bookstore or something to go to. So now I'm looking forward to having my spinning time back during his theater rehearsals this spring. And yeah, I'm going to focus on this one and my Angora yarn. Hi, Felix. It's uh, just hopped up to me here. So that, so that is my, my current spinning project. And then I thought I would share with you what I just received in the mail a couple days ago from Paradise Fibers. I quit doing the unboxings as a separate video because I just got tired of doing them. And it was really hard for me to, I, I was just never in like the recording mood or having the time or just, I just never felt like recording when I got those bags. I just really wanted to dig into them. And so like waiting to do an official unboxing video, just, I did them for three years, but then it got really tiresome. So I'm just doing them as a part of like the podcast now. I don't think I, I guess I didn't show February's because I didn't record a podcast <laughs> since that came. That's okay. I don't know. It, it's packed away right now. So we're just going to skip whatever I have ready to show you guys. I, I'll just show you from here on. So let me just pack this one back in my little bags and then I'll dig out what I just got from them. Okay, so the one that I just got, this is for March. And oh my gosh, you guys, I wanted to say if you didn't see Paradise Fibers, Instagram um, or Facebook. I don't know if they're on Facebook, but definitely on Instagram. They just suffered a fire to their warehouse and a lot of their inventory was damaged from the smoke especially. And so they are kind of in need right now of some support and some, some purchases. And so I, I do have an affiliate link with them I don't care if you use it or not, but it's always in the description to my videos, like underneath in the description box. Um, whether you use my link or not though, if you want to get some fiber or they also have yarn, they also have tools, they could use uh, some support right now as they, you know, take stock of their inventory and get opened again. They're not open to the public yet. but. I'm pretty sure that they have like a 15% sale going on. I don't know if there's a code for that offhand. Just go to their Instagram and just read up um, in their feed on, on what's going on. And you know, they, you'll be able to see the fire and you know, they'll have the information on any discount codes that they have right now. But yeah, if you are able to support Paradise Fibers right now, they could use it. So. I wanted to make sure to mention that. But I received their Fiber Club, and this one is based on the Spring Garden. And this is a painting by. I'm just reading this. I think Fiber Club members get 15% off this month. And yeah, so I don't know if the discount is for everybody or just Fiber Club members. But if you're able to support them, discount or not, they, they could use it. Um, yeah, they just, they included some pictures from the fire. Can't see it too much here, but. Okay, so this painting is Monet. And it's called The Artist Garden, The Artist's Garden at Giverny. And so the colorways 
for this month were inspired by this painting. And it is, what is the fiber content, does it say? Yeah, it's a blend of 60% merino, 19 micron count, and 40% Chinese Tessa silk. And so it's a shimmery, yeah, um, shimmery yarn is gorgeous. You'll see which one I like the best. Um, but I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna share the notions, I'm just gonna share the fiber. So I don't, I don't know which, I don't know what the colorway is. What does it say? I think I can tell you. I just put it on the floor. <laughs> um, this must be the Giverny colorway. And so this is really, really beautiful. And then the, the orchard, orchid, orchid, orchid garden is the next one. And that is, that is my favorite. So this is gorgeous. So this is like purples and greens. And it's so, so beautiful. So that is the Paradise Fibers Fiber Club. And that ends my spinning section for today. And I have a couple of acquisitions to share with you guys. So let's move on into acquisitions. So I have a couple of acquisitions to share because it's just been almost two months since my last podcast. And so I've not acquired that much yarn, but I have a little bit to share. Um, so I don't actually make it into local yarn shops very much anymore. Only if I like need a special needle size or I'm out of my wool wash or, or something small like that usually is what I'm getting these days because I've got my own naturally dyed yarn, I've got a really nice stash and you know I'm just trying to be really really good about spending money. But once a year I have to trek into New York City because the school that I work for the kids put on their graduation concert at Carnegie Hall. And so I just make a day of it. I go into the city because I'm having to pay for the train ticket and the train ticket is kind of pricey. So, you know, I want to be in the city. I We never go into the city, even though we live on Long Island. And it's it's just expensive. It costs a lot of money because, you know, you're there, you're having to eat food and the transportation and the subway, it's just, it's an expensive day. So it's just something that we do very rarely, right? So like to put it in perspective, I haven't been in the city since a year ago when I went in for the student's graduation concert at Carnegie. So it had been a full year since I went in. Um, and so last year when I went in, I visited Nitty City and it had been like 12 years since I had visited that, that yarn shop. Um, and since I had just gone there last year, I just wanted to see like what other shop I could visit. Most of them are not really convenient to the area that I needed to go in, Midtown Manhattan, um, Upper West Side. So, well, not even the Upper West. Carnegie's at like 57th and it's like right by Central Park, like the border of Central Park. Um, but I found that there was a yarn shop that I never knew about down in Greenwich Village. And so I walked down there, it was like at 10th Street. So I took the train into Penn Station and I walked from 34th Street down to Greenwich Village. And I found this cute little yarn shop and they also have some embroidery stuff too. The shop is called, I've got my bag here, it's called West Village Knit and Needle. And I had just looked up online like what yarns they carry and I really, I decided to go there because they carry Life in the Long Grass. And that is a yarn that I never see in any of the yarn shops. So I can't ever see it in person. And 
if I were to order it, I'd be ordering it, you know, from someplace online, not being able to see it. And so I said, okay, life in the long grass, let me go. I'll be able to pick out some colors in person and and that, that'll be good because it's something that I just don't normally have access to. So that was the reason that I went there. And, you know, it had been a year since I had gone in the city. So, you know, I kind of planned to have a, a little bit of a budget for that trip every annually to go in. And so I got a few skeins of Life in the Long Grass. I got a combination of singles and their silk mohairs. And I got three different colors. So I got the Cool Dawn colorway. And so the, um, this one, the singles is 100% Superwash Merino. And it is 400 yards. And so Life in the Long Grass is from Ireland. And then this is a 50 gram, which is 420 meters, it doesn't say the yardage, um, but this is their kid, what is it, kid silk? Yeah, it's haze lace, it's 70% kid mohair and 30% silk lace. And I just really wanted to get some mohairs because I do not have a stash of mohair. And there are so many projects that I'm interested in knitting that do call for mohair. And so that's mostly what I was interested in in picking up. Because um, whenever I want to knit something with mohair, I have to make a purchase because it's just something I don't have. And so I also got the same bases in this beautiful colorway called Rouge. Obviously, this is like my favorite color in the whole world. And then I picked up one more colorway. And this one is called Pink Haze. And it's like a beautiful, I, I see more of like a lavender, icy kind of colorway. Honestly, this one reminds me of my lichen colorway yarn. So, yeah, so that's what I got. I don't exactly know what I'm going to knit with it yet, but I just thought that I'll probably try to use these colors together in a project, but I don't really know what. But I thought that they were just really beautiful. I love jewel tones and just the the paler shades especially mixed in made me think of spring colors and that's kind of what I was feeling on that like cold dreary winter day in New York. So that was like my, my yearly New York City yarn purchase. Um, then back in January, I think it was January, it was either like late January or early February, Susan B. Anderson put out a pre-order for a box of bunnies, a mystery box of bunnies. And so I ordered this easily six to eight weeks ago. Um, actually, no, it was like, yeah, maybe six or seven weeks ago, like right around the time that I did my last podcast, I think. And oh, let me get the box. It is so cute. So, so this was something that I paid for like, you know, practically two months ago and have just been like eagerly anticipating its arrival ever since. I justified this purchase by it being so close to Easter and we don't usually do anything for Easter, but I've got my two pet bunnies and I just couldn't resist a mystery box of bunnies. <clears throat> and her patterns are always so delightful and her yarn is gorgeous. So I received my box of bunnies. Oh my gosh. And I opened it last night and it is adorable and amazing. So um, she designed, so this is like the little illustration shows you kind of like a little bit the bunnies that she designed. So she, it's like a thousand grams total of yarn to make three different brand new bunny patterns that she just designed for this mystery box. I'm so excited. So this was officially, it was my Easter gift from Felix and Elmer Fuzz. Really, yeah just yeah but um it's 
it's amazing it just it came packaged all beautifully so like it came it came packaged and like all wrapped up and it came with a, a letter i'm not gonna read it to you because honestly my battery just died and i had to go quick charge my battery for 10 minutes to finish recording the podcast but there's three different patterns in here there's one called Hopscotch Bunny, and she says, Hopscotch Bunny is a major treat of a bunny coming in at 14 inches tall, from the tip of the ear to the tip of the toe. Hopscotch comes with a fantastic wardrobe, including a stripy turtleneck sweater, a beautiful red cardigan, and a sharp pair of pants with options. And then she just like, you know, says how it's knit, like seamlessly and all that stuff. And they all come with a uh, little embroidery floss and eyes and things like that. The second pattern is bunny in a carrot cozy. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so adorable. So this one, she says, you are going to want to knit one of these for everyone on your list. The bunny has worked seamlessly. It's about seven inches tall. This character looks like it hopped right out of a storybook. The carrot cozy is worked seamlessly from the bottom up, and that's pretty much what that one is. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat, but we're not going to edit much. Okay, and then the third one, so she has a book from like, I have it here. It was like one of the first knitting books I ever got, and I think... What is it called topsy turvy or itty i don't know but it's a book and it's like for babies but she does these reversible toys where like one side is one toy and then you can flip it inside out and it's another toy i think she's got like a chicken that turns into an egg as an example brilliant and adorable and really great baby gifts and stuff so the third pattern is a set of reversible bunnies <coughs> My goodness, I should get a sip of water, but we're trying to beat the battery dying here, so we're just going to continue. All right. She says, I had to include a reversible set of bunnies. These sweet bunnies and dresses flip from one to the other, one with a carrot-themed dress and the other with a stripy dress. This reversible toy is surprisingly simple to knit. The dresses are like two little hats with a few bunny features added. It's all super fun and doable, she says. And she added a separate tiny carrot for fun, which could be used with any of the bunnies. And yeah, so let me just show you the yarn and the little patterns. I'll show you just the drawings. I actually didn't open the envelopes yet. So the two uh, four ounce skeins, there's like a gray one and a white one, which is perfect for my bunnies because I have a gray bunny and I have a white bunny, right? So there are those, and then there's four different colors in two ounce skeins. So there's the red and the pink, and then there's the orange and the green. So that's all the yarn. It's like super beautiful. I love her yarn. And then she included a little tote bag with the uh, Box of Bunnies design on it. And, all right, let me get the, oh, she also included a little pack of wildflower seeds. And then, um, oh yeah, I forgot about these. These are so cute. Um, this cute little set of stitch markers from this company called We Ones. Um, they are on Etsy and they're also on Instagram at We Ones Creations. And then, oh my gosh. I might have to open these, but let's see if I can just get it to focus. There's like a carrot and a little tiny bunny and a bunny head. Super cute. Or is it a watering can? I don't remember. Adorable. Um, so I just, I only looked so far at the little illustrations. So I'll put the little illustrations on. So this one is the hopscotch bunny sketch. I, that's going to be so cute. And, oh, and she included also, she did some embroidery on her bag, and then she turned it into a coaster design. So she did, yeah, so that's like the little embroidery she did. So that's a fun, a fun project as well. 
And then she included for, I think it's for like one of the cardigans, these wooden buttons, which are beautiful. And then this is the little pattern sketch for the reversible bunny. And then the last one is the, the bunny in the carrot cozy. So yeah, unboxing this package was just so delightful. I, I've been excited for this package for two months or six weeks or however long it's been. It's been a while that I have been eagerly anticipating the arrival of that for my spring Easter presents. So we're going to be knitting a lot of bunnies here. I see my husband is pulling into the driveway right now, which is perfect timing because that is finally everything that I have to share with you guys. That was a long one. I will come back soon, I promise, and just keep you up to date on all of the things because there's, there's just a lot going on here. My battery is flashing at me again. It's angry. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe, check out my shop, all that fun stuff, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.